to send over of them. And uh, the, there will no be direct contact between the lens of the roof and the esophageal wall. That will make the, uh, some air between the roof tip and uh, the esophagus will uh, impair the image. So we need to sometimes at least uh, for, for a few millimeters just, just to anti-flex the roof to make direct contact with the esophageal wall. And sometimes to improve the image itself. This is for the probe motion. Uh, there was a, a proposed algorithm on how to acquire the standard views for TAE. Starting from the introduction of the probe, and then the mid of for chamber view, at the zero level, at the zero degrees, uh, we forget to say that these knobs are to change the degree of imaging. From positive to negative, from zero to 180. Once you introduce the, the probe in, the, the, the plane of imaging will be horizontal, flat plane of imaging, zero degrees. That way, the fan of ultrasound will cut the heart in, in horizontal pattern. Once you increase the angle, that means 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 45 degrees. That can be done by these uh, nodes. And then the longitudinal plane of imaging, which is 90 degrees. So 90 degrees, we call longitudinal plane of imaging, then 120, then 180. At the end is uh, just the mirror image of the zero degrees. Once you are in the middle of the four chamber view, you can increase the rotation of the angle from 0 to 60 will give you the commercial view, and then the 90 longitudinal will give you two chamber, and then the long axis, and so on. But practically speaking, we are not recommending that because each TE patient is in distress, even if he is under general anesthesia. So you basically you should go to answer the question of the study first in order to save time. If you have more time, do your standard images. Otherwise, don't waste your time in getting unnecessary views and then you will not have enough time to answer the question of the study itself. Okay, it is not a mission impossible to do TE. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the cheese and then. There is some school. Okay. The first view, once you introduce a group inside the esophagus, the most posterior part of the heart is the left atrium. Okay? So basically, since we are in the middle of the level, the first chamber in this triangle will be the left atrium. So if this is the left atrium, that will be the left ventricle, and the other side is the right side. Okay? This is the triangular plane of imaging emitted from the lens of the probe at the zero degrees. So horizontal plane of imaging. I'm putting here this illustration to show the mitral valve. Uh, it is not the direct anatomical uh, view or the surgical view because the aortic valve is a little bit tilted, but this corresponds very well to the plane of imaging. So in zero degrees plane of imaging, what are the scallops of the mitral valve that we are cutting? This is very important for the surgeons or to say there is flame, perforation, prolapse. If you notice here, we are cutting a very small part of the posterior of the posterior leaflet and the big part of the anterior leaflet. This is if you are cutting below the aortic valve. Once you see the aortic valve, that means you are cutting at a higher level. So once you see the aortic valve, the aortic valve is here, so the tips of the leaflets will be for A1 and B1. What's A1 and B1? Carpenter classification classified the mitral valve scallops into three definite or different scallops for each leaflet. This is the anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet, and this is the left atrial appendage, from lateral to medial. The lateral is one. Just remember one, and then you will uh, remember the others. The lateral is almost one. So A1, <coughs> A2, A3, means anterior leaflet, A4 anterior. P1, P2, P3, D4 posterior. So P1, the most lateral scallop of the posterior leaflet, the middle scallops are two, and the medial scallops here will be the interatrial system, and here is the right side. We are looking from the left atrium now. Uh, so, if you are cutting by the zero plane of imaging at the level of the aortic band, so we will have the aortic band here, and then we will have the tips for A1 and B1. So, these are the tips of A1 and B1. But what about the body of the anterior left limb? It will be for A2, because we are cutting like this. So if you, are, if you need to comment on the tips, this is A1 and P1, but the body, we are not interested in the body here except if the body has something like perforation or a mask. But the tips, 
Here, this is the most important thing, is R4, A1, and B1. Push or inter advance the probe more. Once we introduce the probe more, stay we are at the zero degrees, play with everything. Once you go down, you will get rid of the aortic valve, and then now you are cutting at the tips of A2 and B2. Again, the body is not for A2 anymore, it is for A3. So A3, A2, and B2. No more aortic valve. Again, this is still the lefty atrium. Left ventricle here, we can see the interatrial system more clearly. Right atrium, right ventricle, interventricular septum. If you need to stop me at any point, uh, you can. In this view, you, you can assess many things. You can put color and check if there is much regurgitation like uh, in this patient. Also assess if there is mitral stenosis. You can see the dooming of the post mitral leaflets and assess the gradient very well if there are spontaneous equilateral thrombi. You can measure the gradient, as we said. And sometimes the mitral valve leaflets will love each other very much and play with each other. Like it's a very big illustrator thrombus and so many patients that I had before. Now we stop using the zero degrees plane of imaging. Now we will increase the rotation of the angle from the nose to 60 degrees. It is almost from 50 to 70. That will cut the mitral valve like this. If this is 40 and this is 90, so 60 degrees will cut the appendage, P1, the anterior leaflet, and then P3. So the one near the appendage, this is the appendage here, it is the mirror image. The appendage here, so the first scallop here will be what? B1. B1. And then the anterior leaflet in the middle, and we'll cement on this uh, in a minute. And then B3 is the last scallop uh, median. So B1, B3, and anterior leaflet. Anterior leaflet, if you are cutting a little bit higher, you will cut all the scallops of the anterior leaflet A1, A2, A3. If you are a little bit lower by introducing the group a little bit, you will cut B1. A2 and B3. There are some separations here between the different scallops, so you are sure that this is B1. Usually, B will give you only one scallop because it is very thin. So, B1, uh, the posterior method will not give you many scallops at the same view. This is only one scallop. Uh, a thing to say is the attachment of the anterior leaflet to the annulus is shorter than the attachment of the posterior leaflet to the annulus. This one is more percentric, but that one is long in the middle. But the length of the anterior leaflet is longer than the length of the posterior leaflet. At the end of the day, the areas are the same. Okay? <coughs> this is one of the best views to see the left atrial lamella. Especially if it is enlarged and dilated with dilated left atrium and uh, mother stenosis, you will have a very clear view for the left atrial lamella. Finish with the 60 degrees, now we we'll move to the 90 degrees. We said 0, 20, 30, 45, 60, then 90. So 90 we are speaking about longitudinal plane of imaging. The probe is like this, and the kind of ultrasound is like this also. Now we will cut the mitral valve in such fashion. So we will cut a very big part of the anterior leaflet and then B3. So once you see a two-chamber view on the longitudinal plane of imaging, and the big part of the anterior leaflet, the small part of the posterior leaflet, you are actually seeing A1, A2, A3 tip, B3 tip. Okay? This is different from the commission. This is only one leaflet, there is no appendage, and two chamber view. This one is the Korean side, the small cell. Finished with the 90 degrees, we'll increase the angle more from 90 to 120. The long axis view, sometimes we call it TAVI view for the center working terminal like ours. This is the most commonly used view during TAVI. So we'll have the aortic valve now, plus two scallops from the posterior, from the mitral uh, valve. This view is very important and very 
helpful actually because this one is cutting exclusively one scallop of the anterior leaflet and exclusively one scallop of the posterior leaflet. It's cutting like this. So this is the short, the shortest the diameter of the mitral annulus and the posterior diameter. And we have the anterior the aortic valve, it will cut the anterior leaflet of the aortic valve, which is the right <coughs> coronary cusp. And then the anterior the A2 from the base to the tip and B2. This is very helpful because this is exclusively one scallop. So which scale, which cusp is this? Right. 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 This is again the reverse from what we are saying that the cusp is the right coronary cusp, but we are not sure at all about the posterior one. Sometimes it depends on your angle of, of, of imaging, sometimes the, the left, sometimes the left, sometimes the, the, the non, the non coronary cusp. But we are pretty sure that the anterior one in the thoracic or thoracic is the right coronary cusp. And then A2, the whole A2, and the B2. And this is the RBOT. Exactly like the brassternal long axis view, but from the uh, mid uh, superior axis. It's the rotation, any in the right, the left, the left, the right, the right. Bizarre. Bizarre. Uh, uh, the right, the 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 But how to be sure that you are not cutting different if you see the maximum dimension of the aortic annulus that you are exactly at the right, at the middle of the valve. But the person is saying if we rotate it, if you are in this view, actually I'm doing this, but for the basic level, well, we, we can be uh, uh, just so at this point. If you are at this level and you clockwise rotate it, the group you will go to the right. But in that case, you will not find the aorta fully open. But you will cut at A3 and B3. The same back to the neutral position and then to the left of the patient. And clockwise, you will cut A1 and B1, but you will not see the aortic valve fully open. Once you see the aortic valve fully open, you are sure that this is A2 and B2. This, if you are using uh, 2DTE, in 3DTE the issue is more simple and more direct. There is no need for assumptions. We are looking now to the mitral valve from the left atrium. We just flip over the, the volume to look to the mitral valve from the left ventricle. We will put the aortic valve at 12 o'clock position here. Because if you remember that the aortic valve was pointing like this and the mitral was pointing upwards, so it, it is impossible to see them in the same view with full orientation. Because this is the mitral valve, the aortic valve is pointing like this at 12 o'clock. This is the anterior mitral leaflet, stereo mitral leaflet. As we said, there is there are definite identitions between the scallops of the posterior leaflet. So this is P1, left atrial appendage should, should be here, septum should be here. P1, P2, P3, A1, A2, A3. Aortic valve. Rotate this, look from down, the LV, anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet, and this is the LVOT. That will be the anterolateral commissure of the mitral valve, and that will be the posterior medial commissure of the mitral valve. Some pathologies, this is the long axis view at 120 degrees, you can see the aortic valve, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet. The answer is here, but this perforation is where? Exactly at A2, because we are seeing nothing but the A2. Okay? So this is the perforation of the anterior matter in the middle, the body of the anterior matter leaflet, and there is some malcoaptation also here uh, at the tip also. So we have a perforation, and if I increase the, I, I know the case, so there was prolapse plus perforation, and that was the 3D TA picture. You can see the anterior leaflet, the hole is very clear, and there was another hole also at A3, but we couldn't pick, but, and, and this is the lesson, don't be taken by one finding, sometimes you can find the other finding in the same page. And the posterior leaflet was not innocent as well, there was a prolapse of P2 and P3 of the posterior mitral leaflet, so that the pathology here was combined actually. This is a prolapse of both leaflets, A2 and P2. For the prolapse to diagnose quickly, the leaflet should go up like this in a pyramidal fashion. Once the belly of the leaflet is going down, but the tips are still above the annular level, annular, annular level here at, at, at the maximum systole, if the tips are still pointing towards the uh, left ventricle, that, that's called billowing only, not prolapse. Once the belly takes the tips down to the annulus, these are the annulus, that's prolapse. 
Once one of them is pointing towards the left atrium, this is flay. So not every billowing is, is prolapsed, but this is over the ghost these days. Billowing. Billowing of the uterus. The metatical is pointing towards the left atrium, even if it's not the same. Even if it's not the same. This is by 3D TDE. It's exactly B2 prolapse. And we have also the opportunity to rotate. B2 single is always prolapsing. Is it clear? From the 120 degrees, maximum anti clockwise rotation, broke bus scanner, maximum anti clockwise rotation to the left of the patient will give you the pulmonary veins. The left pulmonary veins, two pulmonary veins, the left upper and the left lower. So 120 extreme left will give you the uh, left, uh, the left uh, upper and lower pulmonary veins. The left atrial appendage, you can see the left atrial appendage is almost all uh, the degrees. At zero degrees, you can see it. 45 degrees, 90 degrees by some rotations, and 135 degrees. Especially those who are involved in percutaneous closure of the left atrial appendage, if they are using 2 DTE, they have to get the measurements of the ostium and depth of the left atrial appendage in all these angles because it is basically not a circular and uniform shape. If you can see the 3D image of the appendage, this is the appendage, the one first view of the appendage itself. This is the appendage ostium, this is the comedian ridge, left upper pulmonary vein, and this is the anterolateral commissure of the mitral valve, aortic valve. If you ignore this part, you will see a longer axis view. Aorta, anterior mitral, posterior mitral, right? But this is the depth behind. So you can see it is not circular at all. In order to give an osteal dimension, you have, if you are using 2D, you have to get that. Uh, you, you, you have to get these measurements in different axes, in different uh, angles. Otherwise, you get this one volume by 3D and put it in the MPR mode and then cut whatever you want and put your lines exactly at the ostium and it is also dynamic. So it is not necessary that if you fix it, the appendage in one view and measure the ostium, it will be the same moment in the other view. So it is really helpful to get a dynamic view for the ostium of the stating appendage by uh, 3D TE. We are still in the, one, in the 120 degrees. If you need, if you need this, to see more of the ascending aorta, the ascending aorta is going up. The axis of the ascending aorta is going higher up, right? So if you are in the middle of the view and you are cutting the root and part of the ascending aorta, what you want to do if you need to see more of the ascending aorta, pull the probe up, send you. So pull the probe up, you will get more of the ascending aorta. By the way, the root, the aortic root is only from the annulus to the sinusoidal junction. This part is the root. Above which is the ascending root. So this is not the root. For sure, this view is very helpful in assessing patients with dissection. This is the type A dissection. And also from this, you can get also unbiased by 3D, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> this is the flap of uh, the dissection. This is the true lumen, and this is the false uh, lumen. OK. The orientation of the great vessels. You can notice here, after the aortic valve, ascending aorta is going more or less vertical. Beside it, you can see the superior vena cava running also superiorly or vertically. But the pulmonary artery and its branches are going more or less horizontal. That means if you are using a flat, a flat or a horizontal plane of imaging, which is a zero degrees, and you are imaging right here, you will cut the pulmonary along axis because it's flat, and you will cut the ascending aorta and the superior vena cava in short axis, and vice versa. So once you see a two short ax axis axis for the ascending aorta and superior vena cava, and see a long axis vessel that that is the pulmonary artery and its branches. What to do to get the pulmonary artery and its branches? Start by the zero degrees, build the superior view, and just pull the probe up. That's it. Zero degrees, pull the group up. That's it. I made this intention just for the lesson. So from the full chamber view, aorta up, ascending, 
subgrebia cava, and this is the pulmonary artery, and this is the right pulmonary artery branch. Very simple. Pulmonic valve, main pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, ascending up to severe vena cava. And if I tilt it more, I can see the right upper pulmonary vein here, another circle. And if I tilt it to the left, I can see the left pulmonary artery. A very good opportunity to put color and get continuous with the gradient for the pulmonary vein. Maybe one of the very rare views to get the uh, flow over the pulmonary uh, valve. Pulmonary valve is usually a very troublesome. Valve, we hate it. It is the least clear uh, uh, valve in all modalities of echo. That's why I hate it. The aortic valve, uh, the short axis base view, we need it is always from 40 to 60 degrees, mid esophageal. Mid esophageal because this is the left atrium, interatrial system, right atrium, tricuspid, pulmonary. Exactly like the short axis view of the thoracic, but upside down again. The names of the cusps of the aortic valve. We said the most anterior is the right one, right? So where is the anterior here? That one, right coronary cusp. The whole, the landmark or the hallmark of the non-coronary cusp is the interatrial septum. So interatrial septum that means this is the non-coronary cusp, the anterior, the right coronary cusp. The left is always the left. Transthoracic transesophageal, the left is always left. Okay, so that makes our life easy. We can diagnose patients with aortic stenosis. The guidelines allow us to uh, planimeter the aortic valve area from this view, from the transesophageal, not from the transthoracic. Also, patients with bicuspid aortic valve. This is a patient with bicuspid, but 20 million sometimes, if you cut the RFA, Tangentially, you may think this is a third commission and miss uh, the diagnosis of bicuspid aortic valve. But by 3D, because you have the opportunity to go two steps backwards and look from a distance. So you can see that this is a real rafe and this is only a bicuspid uh, aortic valve. So, the bicable view, one of the most important views, especially for interventional Cardiology and for the congenital as well. By cable, so if the cap is going upwards, if the cap is going downwards, if you need to image them both, you need a longitudinal plane of imaging, right? Which is at almost at 90 degrees. Some patients will open the by cable with more rotation at 120 degrees, but you should start by the 90 degrees. Again, the atrium is here, right atrium, severe vena cava, inferior. Usually, here is a superior. If you remember the pulmonary veins, we said the upper is here, lower is there. So here is usually the upper and the superior. Superior vena cava, and this part is the right atrial appendage. And this ridge is cresta terminalis. Okay? The, if there is another ridge here at the superior vena cava, that will be the stachian valve or stachian valve or whatever. Okay? A very good view to diagnose BFO. This is a BFO. Here you can notice I lower down the scale of uh, the velocity in order to get the low velocity flow. If you notice there, there is no real 2D effect. But it's a rather uh, uh, a flare valve or a potential space between the septum primum and septum secundum. This is the stachium valve, another patient. The other one was crystal terminal is right here. So there is no real defect, but there is a flow between these, uh, this flare. This is another vision. I like this image so much because it has the two anatomies. It has a real defect, supposed to have kind of ASD, and it has BFO. the BFO. There is no flow, but this is the anatomy of the BFO, and this is an uh, kind of ASD. From here, you can measure the severe vena cava rim, inferior vena cava rim. By 3D, it's a lot easier again, because uh, this is the anatomical view, the interactive symptom from the right interest side. This is an ASD. Here's the severe vena cava, here's the inferior aorta, here, so you can see the shape and the rims and the location of the septum and even guide the uh, floor. From this view, just to the right, rotate to the right of the patient, you will get the right upper pulmonary vein from the back cable. Just rotate clockwise to the right of the patient, you will get the right upper pulmonary vein. We finish this, go down to the stomach. Once you pass, 
the stomach you may uh, uh, lose the image. It will be black. Because the probe is going like this, vertically, and the heart is, is like that. So you need, at this moment, but you make sure that you are inside the stomach, okay? And then you anti-cloak, wise, anti-flex the probe to sweep behind the heart. Like that. Okay, once you pass the gastrocele junction, which is one of the most irritant uh, positions for the probe, the most irritant is usually the gastrocele junction and the higher surgical uh, uh, axis. Still, with a zero degrees plane of imaging. Zero degrees means horizontal plane of imaging. You will cut the short axis of the ventricles. So you will get a short axis view at the base of the heart. And here is by, uh, the, the reverse again. The commission near to the apex is the most posterior, posterior median. And here is the anterolateral. Now here is the anterior. Here is the inferior wall, septum lateral. If, if I need to go down to the papillary muscles, I have two motions to do. Either of them, either to introduce the probe more, advance it more, or to reduce the anti-flexion. So the image more like this. Okay. Some patients come with this uh, trick, and some others come with the other one. This is the papillary muscles. Again, which papillary muscle is it? Posteromedial, and this is the anterolateral. Again, septum, and here is the inferior wall. Here is the anterior. A very good view to give the ejection fractions. Uh, let's see, you guys are doing this every day. I'm uh, almost finished. Uh, don't now I will rotate more. I was imaging by zero degrees. On the same level, I will just make it 90. So from zero to 90, I will cut the ventricle longitudinal. Two chamber view, inferior, anterior, a very good view to assess the subalvar apparatus. Okay, and also the contraction and. Uh, and whatever, and sometimes the mitral valve as From the same axis, rotate more from 90 to 120. 120 is usually giving you the long axis. It will open the aortic valve for you. A very good view also to assess the aortic valve, sometimes the gradient and sometimes the, the rigor, especially the barrel rigor. From our experience, especially after term. Usually after tabbing, we detect the barrel leg very good, not to break, not to say moderate or mild or severe, to detect. That one is very good in detection of the barrel leg. This is the deep transgastric view. How to get this? Advance the probe more to the tip. Advance. Advance. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, almost the, the, the best view to detect the gradient over the aortic valve, the to the aortic valve, <coughs> and also to uh, assess the rigor. That comes with extreme anti-flexion. Aortic rigor or stenosis gradient. The last thing, the descending aorta and arch. Again, the orientation. The sending aorta is vertical and the arch is horizontal. So if I need to get short the axis of the sending, I need a zero degrees plane of imaging. And if I need to give the, the, the long axis of the arch, again I need zero. And vice versa. How to get the sending aorta? Very simple. From the zero degrees, anteriorly, just rotate. That's good. It's very easy. Just from the four chamber view with the surgeon, just to rotate the rope to the left. The left is more deep. Okay? So you get the short axis of the descending here, and then you can uh, change the, the depth to get a clear view of the short axis of the descending arc. This is a patient with normal uh, descending arctic wall, and this is a patient with a flying acrome. That was one of the patients that was difficult for me to assess for the feasibility for TAB in, in my previous center of Saudi Arabia. And usually the, the common axis for the tabbing in my grave center was the transfemoral axis. That was excluded because of this. You don't like to pass any uh, uh, catheters, especially for the tabby, besides such uh, flying lateral. So it was then trans Dr. Hanyan, do you have this uh, aceroma for uh, medical? Not, not. <laughs> 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 I 
And we started by a short axis, and then we end up by a long axis. So what did we do here? We pulled the rope up. Okay, so we pulled the rope up from the descending to the arch. How did I know this? Because I'm still at the zero degrees. So by zero degrees, then it was flat or longitudinal axis. That means I'm at the level of the arch. I can do another thing. From the zero, I can increase the angle to 90. To get the long axis view of the descent. Okay? Now I can just open this. Or simply, you have to have a 3D group, transport, transport, so you to get the X again. Short axis and the long axis at the same time. I think now it's not mission impossible. Thank you so much. <laughs>